Welcome. I hear you're in the market for a new dermoscope or thinking of buying your first one. I want to help guide you through this minefield with three questions you need to answer. I'll then be reviewing the three dermoscopes I have at the 40, 200 and 1000 price points, including pictures taken of the same lesion to help you compare them in action. And if you make it to the end of this video, I'll reveal the best dermoscope for you and why you should be buying your own. Hi, I'm Andy from the South Yorkshire Dermoscopy Academy, where we help you become that great primary care dermoscopist you were born to be. Of all the questions I get asked about dermoscopy, the most common one is this, which dermoscope should I buy? Look, I get it. You want to learn dermoscopy and your first problem is, I need a dermoscope because you can't practice dermoscopy without a dermoscope. It's a bit like trying to fly without wings. However, you do an internet search and you are overwhelmed by the options available and put off by the prices. Do you really need to rob a bank to start learning dermoscopy? I hope that's not for me. Question one for you. Which characteristics attract you most? Just imagine you're looking for that special someone in your life and you've joined an internet dating site. You fill in the characteristics of your ideal partner and you'd like to be paired with a blonde or a brunette. Over six foot, under six foot. Are looks important? Would you date a smoker? Is there anything that's a deal breaker for you? It's the same with perching a dermoscope. Okay, maybe not the blue eyed bit, but other characteristics. Now, if you're a first timer when it comes to perching a dermoscope, you probably don't even know what characteristics there are and which are most important, right? If that's you, I'm now going to share with you briefly my carefully considered list of five vital characteristics to look for in a dermoscope. First up, is it a hybrid? Any dermoscope that doesn't have them both is already a compromise. Also consider how easy it is to switch between views, polarized and non-polarized, when using the dermoscope on a patient. Anything less than a hybrid, and you're making it harder for yourself, working with one arm behind your back, or should that be with one eye, not two? The second characteristic for you to consider is what I call the naked eye test. By which I mean, how easy is it to use with the naked eye? Why? Because some dermoscopes are designed to primarily be used in conjunction with a camera phone. Question, which has a high resolution and therefore better? Your eye or a camera phone? A viewing lens of 30 millimeters or more means that it's much easier to pick up those patterns much more clearer than just using a phone camera. Many dermoscopes have viewfinders of only 10 to 15 millimeters, which is rather small. Characteristic three, is it camera compatible? Can you take a photograph through it easily? You'll want to take photographs. Consider how quickly and easily it is to attach and unattach. Also, look at the package when you're buying. Does the camera come with a connector compatible with your phone? Or is it an optional extra? You'll have to splash cash for characteristic four. Is it baggable? Meaning, is it GP bag friendly? Here's my GP bag. You'll want to be carrying your dermoscope with you wherever you go, right? On home visits, I pick up many skin cancers by chance. If it's not in your bag, are you really going to come back with your dermoscope later? Therefore, consider these issues of what I call bagability. What's the battery life like? How well protected will it be? How small and light is it? My fifth and final characteristic when purchasing a dermoscope is this. Is it a looker? Some people put this characteristic first because the ultimate question is, how clear is the image you're getting? You can't really answer that very important question without trying it out and comparing it with its peers to see which is better. Therefore, try before you buy is super useful if you can. Has someone else around you got a dermoscope you could try for a while or look at? Those which have larger glass lenses, you'd expect to perform better than those with smaller plastic lenses, and that usually affects the price. I'm talking about dermoscopes here, not people on dating sites. Hmm. The second question I think you need to answer is this. What kind of relationship are you looking for anyway? Which of these three are you? Are you just flirting with dermoscopy? In other words, just wanting to see if it's to your liking. It's a bit of fun rather than a serious relationship to you at the moment. Or are you having a fling with the muscopy? Ready for some commitment, but holding back because you're not all in just yet. And finally, are you a fiance? You know that dermoscopy for you is for life and not just for Christmas. You are prepared to give it the best that you have because it's worth it. Only the best will do. Which one are you? For your answer will determine your response to my final important question. How much do you want to afford? But let me say this, if dermoscopy is for you and your heart is set on it, then somehow find the money for a top-notch dermoscope. Beg, borrow, steal, scratch the last one, it's illegal. Your view of the skin would be the best and that will help you learn quicker, more securely, making it more fun as well. Buy it, you can thank me later. If you are looking for the cheapest and lowest cost dermoscope out there, then maybe already you've searched the internet and found dermoscopes being advertised for something like 35 pounds. What's not to like? Do they work? To help you get a more practical feel for dermoscopes, I'm going to demonstrate three of my dermoscopes for you. Let's use my list of five characteristics to rate each one out of five 
for a maximum score of 25. First up is this unbranded dermoscope at only £35. This is what the box looks like. It has two interchangeable face plates, batteries aren't included, and being non-polarised, you would need to use a contact medium with it. It has two small non-polarised lights and a viewfinder that is this size. Being non-polarised, it isn't a hybrid. Is it camera compatible? There is no means I have found of attaching a camera that I can see. Good luck if you do. Is it baggable? Well, it's got a good protective case, but it's heavy. I don't need anything that's heavier. If I take it out of its case and just put it in my bag as it is, I don't think it would last very long in my bag. Finally, is it a looker? Apart from struggling to get photographs from it to show you, here's my best efforts. I took two photographs of this seborrheic keratosis, one with contact gel and one without. The one without isn't dermoscopy, it's just light and magnification. However, I was a little bit surprised at what I could see. And there are some nice ridges and fissures and what I would call a cerebriform pattern to this seborrheic keratosis visible. In summary, you will see something using it, and it's not a complete waste of money, but I would be worried that you'd quickly become frustrated with it and give up on dermoscopy. My second dermoscope to show you is the Dermlite HUD 2. This is what's in the box. You have a charging cable, two clips to choose from to enable you to attach it to your phone camera, a small soft pouch to give it a little bit of protection, and two plastic clip-on face plates. It's not a hybrid, it's a polarised dermoscope. There's no need for a contact medium, but you can slightly improve the image using the plastic clip-on face plates and a contact medium. What about the naked eye test? There's a small eye lens which you could use with a naked eye, but it would be a struggle. It's really designed to be used using a phone camera. Is it camera compatible? Yes, it is. It's easy, quick, clip-on option that is strong enough. I really like the ease of use for taking pictures. This is a big advantage for this dermoscope. Is it baggable? How well protected will it be? It comes with a cloth cover, which is useful for scratch and dust protection, which is something. It is beautifully light and small, so it's not a bother to carry around in your bag. However, I'd be a little bit concerned about it getting knocked about in a heavy bag. What's the battery life like? If you switch the light on, it will stay on for three minutes, and then there's an auto off. If you do that 10 times, it will be flat, and that's 30 minutes of use. It won't work with the charging cable attached, which is a shame. I think the battery really lets this dermoscope down and I'd be concerned it wouldn't work when you needed it most. Here's the same image using the HUD 2 compared to the cheaper dermoscope. I think it looks a bit sharper. I think you can see that it gives a clearer image and you can see a suggestion of blood vessels on the ridges of this seborrheic keratosis, but the periphery is less clear. So in summary for this HUD 2, I think it's light and easy to use but let down with a poor battery life. I have several of these and I lend them out to our GP registrars and Foundation 2 doctors, showing them how to take a photograph, how to put the photograph in the notes, so that we can then discuss the patient and discuss their management. Finally, my Dermlite DL3. I've had this around 12 years and it cost me £880 at the time. That's around £70 a year and it's still growing strong. The box is long gone, but it came with this leather pouch and a charging cable for it to sit within at home. A light comes on to tell you when it needs recharging. If you wish to do contact dermoscopy, the faceplate extends by rotating this dial here. Otherwise, it can be retracted back into its casing. So, is it a hybrid or not? It is, and it's easy one to use. There's one button. If you hold it for three seconds, the dermoscope switches on, and then you toggle between polarized and non-polarized views and the lights will switch off like this. Next, the naked eye test. It has a large eye lens, easy to see through. What about camera compatibility? This was a problem for me for a few years, but no longer. We now have a simple clip-on using a magnetic ring like this. Is it baggable? First of all, the leather pouch it came with, I'm still using, and it gives it great protection within my bag. I've thrown it into my bag like this for many years without problem. It has a wonderful incorporated battery, which I charge up once a week, but I have found that it will last for at least a month. And there's a light that will tell you when it's running low on power. It has never let me down when I've needed it. It's really quite light and portable in my bag. Finally, is it a looker? Well, there are two images. One is polarized, the other non-polarized. Note the clarity of the image, how much easier it is to see the vessels on the ridges. But look at the periphery. It's now showing vessels with a white halo around them that aren't seen in the others. These are hairpin vessels, which helps confirm our diagnosis of seborrheic keratosis. You'll have missed those with the other dermoscopes. I hope my three questions have given you food for thought and reviewing my dermoscopes helps to point out the differences between them and the various characteristics that dermoscopes can portray. If you found value in this video I've made, then please put the thumbs up, which encourages me to keep making them. 
And if you've enjoyed this, there are other videos I've made which you can watch. So please subscribe to get my weekly updates. But here's my answer to my bonus question. Why buy your own? Thomas Paine said, what we obtain too cheaply, we esteem too lightly. And I think that's true for many things in life. If someone gives you a dermoscope, you're not going to treasure it. However, if you had to make some sort of sacrifice to buy it, you're much more likely to look after it and use it. Maybe you have a practice where there's a dermoscope, but it's shared. The question is, is, who will look after it? Who will check it's charged? When you go there and it's not there, you've wasted time. Also, if it's a shared dermoscope and you go out on a visit, are you going to take it with you or not? If it's in your bag, it's locked and loaded. So my advice is, buy your own. Don't rely on someone else buying it for you. And my final point, what's the best dermoscope for you? The best dermoscope for you is the one you're prepared to use. What should I put on the shelf behind me? How about the £35 dermoscope to remind us that all dermoscopes aren't created equally? Until next time, thank you for watching. Training a primary care dermoscopist for every general practice.